welcome to the channel if you'd like to um support please like subscribe share ring bells do all the usual stuff this is actually a very close to my heart kind of subject i didn't even know this was going on i mean i know that we are different in scotland than it is in the in england um to give people a bit of a um an overview of what this is all about so most of the land in the uk is owned by very very few people a lot of the land is owned by legacy families lords and all these horrible people archaic system you know literally still back you know hundreds of years some places literally in the hands of a family for nearly a thousand years um in scotland however for quite a long i think it's nearly 200 years now we have the freedom to roam so that means that you can go wherever you like you know as long as you're on foot as long as you're not in a motorized vehicle um as long as it's not uh, a um an area that is worked up like let's say like a, a like a garden uh, a cultivated garden um they also don't really want you to walk through you know a cultivated field or you know where animals are grazing but pretty much everywhere else you can literally go um and enjoy nature as much as you want land that's owned by landowners um by the state um forestry parks uh, um you name it you can kind of nearly go wherever you like you can even wild camp pretty much anywhere um there are obviously certain limitations but overall it's pretty pretty free and it it's obviously amazing now people have to understand uh, if you're not from Scotland you have to understand a few things one of the reasons this came about was because so much land was um was owned by so few which meant that if you wanted to go out you know let's say hiking or maybe you know tenting for the night somewhere you you basically couldn't because you would by default always be trespassing and the majority of the land that we have in Scotland is obviously pretty open um so there's a lot of it um and so it makes sense i mean if you're on somebody's land you're not really bothering anybody you know and it doesn't mean that you can do what you want you can't like start fires and start bashing stuff around it is basically just an access right a right to access England is not so good with that. They have um okay, let's go back to Scotland. We don't really have trespassing laws in the ways that is commonly understood. Um it isn't that simple. It's a tricky one. You you, you shouldn't be trespassing and you can be certain circumstances be done for trespassing but actually it's very very uncommon and in most places it just doesn't happen it, it, they are so vague and they're they're, they're so gray so you can kind of go wherever you want um but like i said you can't do what you like you know there <laughs> so in england is a bit different they do have uh, they're a bit more rigid and a bit more strict there but obviously from trying to be nice a lot of places were open but now it seems to be much more of a clamping down on this uh acc- on these access rights in these um free to roam areas so i saw this on um coming up on my feet so let's just check this out hundreds of people have been protesting for the right to wild camp in dartmoor national park in the southwest of england last week the uk's high court ruled that the permission of landowners was required before camping on dartmoor the national parks authority has now struck a deal to pay landowners to allow wild camping in some areas claire marshall reports this is a battle bus rolling into the village square. We're here today to summon up a spirit, to defend Dartmoor and its wild camping rights. The organisers of this rally, the right to roam, say they are at war for the right to sleep under the stars. And let's go and summon up the spirit of Dartmoor. How do you feel about the level of support? It's amazing, amazing. So, 
for societal purposes, this is obviously extremely important. Um, you can't have a, a, a situation where the haves and the have nots have such a big divide. When it comes to land, you know, obviously you can own land, but you can't just sit on it. And I think that's one of the reasons why there's a Scottish land reform as well. It is about the land is for everyone. If you own a piece of land and you use that piece of land for the greater good, you're farming on it or you make a park out of it or something, it's okay. And and you then also have measures to um, protect that, you know, and uh, or possibly even charge for, for entry to it. But if you just own swathes of land and not doing anything with it um, and keeping it away from the general public, that's where the problem lies. And in this segment here, they talk about the landowner not wanting people um, or, or requiring them to ask them if, if they can wild camp. So I don't know if this is the roaming access and the wild camping is the same here. I don't know if it's just the camping that, that they want to um, lock down on or if it's also, you know, the general access and the free to roam kind of access. But anyway, regardless, the camping access, I mean, what somebody goes up there, pitches a tent, makes a wee fire, cooks some dinner, leaves the next morning. Why would that even be an issue to anybody? Um, so it's really just this kind of um, idea of, of ownership. It's mine. Nobody should touch it. That, you know, what's the point in that? So anyway, I think this is a very important subject and I hope they fight this right to the end and get what they need.